first he wrote a poem, and then he put it to music, music, by the way, that nobody can classify. Uh, it's often referred to as blues, because Billie Holiday sings as a blues singer, but, but it really doesn't fit that genre. We, no one knows where it came from. Uh, and <laughs> it was performed a few times, and Abel Mirapol played it for Billie Holiday at uh, Cafe Society in Greenwich Village, uh, and Barney Josephson, the owner, uh, encouraged Billy to sing it, and she sang it, and the rest is history, because it, it exploded in terms of interest. Uh, the thing about Strange Fruit that I think is so important for people to understand, it's not a dirge, it's not a mournful song, it's an attack song. It's an attack against the perpetrators of lynching. And as such, it is extremely powerful, and it's why it was banned, it's why it caused riots, it's why it helped destroy Billie Holiday's life. In fact, Billie Holiday said each time she sang that song, she had to go in the bathroom and throw up afterwards. It so wrenched her. This song became big again in Robert Mirapol. Yeah, well, it's been growing recently, but really one of the things that gave it a tremendous uh, boost is somewhat ironic, in that uh, Kanye West put Nina Simone's version, or singing Blood on the Leaves, Blood on the Leaves, in the background of a rap. Uh, and, there, and it was a pretty bad rap, in my opinion. Um, and that caused an Internet controversy. Uh, particularly African Americans feeling that this this was the equivalent of sacrilege to do this to this song, which got everybody thinking about Strange Fruit, everybody buying Nina Simone's record, more people recording it. So whatever Kanye West did that may offend people, it actually served a positive purpose.